Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for Mentoring Moments, Part 2. We're still in the studio with, I call her Jules, affectionately. And we're (laughs) going to talk about her major and what she's going to do as far as her master's program is concerned. And also the near future, because graduation is around the corner, Jules. It is. It is. (laughs) So what are you going to do with that second piece of paper now? So what I'm planning on doing, of course, is I'm in the job uh, or applying for jobs. So I am applying to jobs that are more case management, um, in which I will work with populations that are high risk. So I will work with populations that have experienced chronic homelessness, substance abuse, domestic violence, things of that nature. So I'm applying currently to work in um, work with the, that population. Um, at my internship, I am a case manager. So a lot, I work with 10 different families and all of those families have experienced chronic homelessness, domestic violence, um, or just generally low, low income. Um, so I've had a very positive experience and I want to continue in that work. So that's what I'm planning on doing. We'll, we shall see where I end up and, you know, what job I can get. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're definitely going to uh, stay in contact and you have to keep me posted because uh, at your age, I was traveling, but not as much. And I see so much, you know, ahead of you as far as your horizon is concerned. And I so appreciate your positive attitude about handling uh, certain situations or circumstances. But you know what? Why don't you give our audience an example of a good day, an example of a not so good day? Okay. In terms of school, right? Right. In terms of school and also your social work, too. Okay. Oh, I have an example of that. <laughs> um, so I'm sure you have a few. <laughs> yes, there, there's quite a few. <laughs> um, I think one of the not so good days that I've had that I still remember to this day happened my first year um, in the social work program. Um, I was working with an intern who had been there a year before I had. So I was kind of shadowing her and picking up where she left off. And um, a student came in, they were visibly upset and crying, and um, we sat out to talk to the child, and the child felt like that they were being blamed for something that they did not do. And we had recently had visited the school where the student attended, and we saw that there was a substitute teacher who was being very negative to the children um, and was not very responsive. She was she just looked very stressed out, and it showed in her interaction with the children. So I wasn't surprised to see that the child felt like she did something wrong. And that could have been, you know, on my my mistake to assume that she did something wrong, but just her interactions I felt was um, could have been better. Um, so what we did was we talked to the child and the intern who was, um, had seniority over me, she encouraged me to email the teacher who was not present and inform her, you know, that the child felt like they were being treated unfairly and to kind of ask and see if there's anything that we can do in terms of, you know, working with the child or if the child did not in fact do anything wrong because of the social, the substitute teacher, um, is there a way that we can talk about the penalties, um, for this behavior that he did not do? Um, I got a response back from the principal of the school and the principal was like, Oh, you know, you shouldn't, can, should not allow the their interns to contact um, teachers without permission, and they shouldn't be in the school, uh, and you need to train them more properly, basically telling us that we're incompetent and that we did something wrong for inquiring about the child. Mm. Um, this intern that had a seniority over me, she was very confused because she said she's always done that and it's not never been a problem. Um, however, now it's a problem. So for me, I felt, I guess I felt, I did feel sort of attacked, but I did feel, I kind of took what she said at to heart and saying that I was incompetent in what I was doing, um, which was not the case. I was just showing concern for the child. Um, so I think that was a really bad day for me. It definitely into it affected um, our relationship with the school in terms of, you know, trying to be more clear in communication. But of course, the principal of that school did not want to be clear in communication with interns or the organization because teachers feel like you are kind of impinging on their state of being or their their territory when you ask questions like that. 
So um, I learned not to internalize that, but that definitely made me feel like, well, maybe it's not for me. Well, maybe I'm not supposed to, you know, ask questions of teachers. And that's not the case. You can definitely ask questions, you know, of the teacher and just be concerned for the child. So that was a really bad day. No, I was going to say, like, personality, they don't teach you that in the books, you know, because your personality or your character, your background, you know, play a lot in what you have to say and how you govern the policies. You know, they can be mm-hmm. written in in black and white, but, you know, the way you carry them out is not what you say is how you say it, as, as they say. Right. Yeah. But yeah. eventually, right. you know, my thought is that it, it does lead to better days. So do you have a sunshine or a ray of hope to share with some story that, you know, may have turned out a different way, but it turned out pretty good? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I have a story like that. Um, and I definitely have to be careful about not sharing too much information because of confidentiality, but, um, I'll say like I work with clients, um, now who, um, especially in January, like after the holidays, they tend to be, have struggles with paying their rent because of course they want to, you know, provide for their children and have a happy holiday season. Um, so I think, just generally, this semester, I've been helping people and, to, and maintain their housing and prevent eviction. And I think that has been like the best thing ever because I can see the impact of our work together um, and see the results. Like they're still housed, they're still stably housed, they still have a place, you know, to feed and clothe their children. Um, so I think that was is like a big success. So that's just generally um, what I do now. So I really I really enjoy that, and it definitely keeps me going, making sure people are housed and don't experience chronic homelessness ever again. Hopefully, so yeah, you're definitely being a game changer because I can't imagine um, you not being successful at what you're doing as far as just graduating. You know, because a lot of people think it's just the piece of paper, but that's why. I appreciate the interview is because you're applying what you're learning as far as strategy and method, you know, to what you're doing and working. And it's creating an impact in other people's lives. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. So it's like my, my, my thought is that when you're choosing your career course or, you know, you're trying to decide, okay, what direction do I go? You know, I'm sure that had uh, roots in where you came from. (laughs) <laughs> yes, definitely. Right. So <laughs> in that understanding is now you get to come back or at least go ahead to, you know, impact other lives that you would have never been able to impact. Right. Had exactly. you not left the nest. You know, you could have stayed in Chicago, you know, because the other thing I wanted to bring up in part one was that, you know, the transportation system here in Chicago or just even Illinois, because if you've ever traveled outside the country, you realize how fortunate you are to have a, a any kind of transportation system that has a bus stop you know mm-hmm. so when you were yes. talking about you know just cows and comfort I was like ooh, my goodness <laughs> <laughs> I was uh-huh. like you know we had we had another conversation about um just being an African-American and if you could touch on and I know this is sort of kind of going off the off beaten path, but you recently, from the pictures that I saw, you went to na- back to natural, you know. So talk about that journey if you could. I'm sorry, back to Nashville. No natural hair, your hair. Oh, natural. Sorry, right. you don't have a relaxer anymore, correct? No, I don't. See? I haven't had a relaxer in three years. Wow. Um, it comes in May to be three years. Yeah, it's like the 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 fashion trend are sort of kind of helping when I was your age, that wasn't the fashion trend. You see what I'm saying? So I was <laughs> yeah. like, you didn't have, not only did you ha- not have the, the support of the media, but you didn't have the support of your friends. If you wanted to be natural, you, you were trying to be too African, you know, let's, let's put it that way. So <laughs> it wasn't working uh-huh. for us, but thankfully it's working for you now because you have a greater support system, especially with the internet. You could just order something online if you, if you find a good product, but talk about mm-hmm. like what made you to decide to go natural and, you know, it's three years since what's keeping you on that path. Right. Um, that's a really, that's a really great question. I think I chose to go natural because when I had a perm, my hair came out quite a bit. 
Um, so there was like a, a several months where I chose not to perm my hair before I officially went natural. I think it was like six or seven months. And I had tremendous growth. Um, then I permed it again and all of the hair that I had gained was coming out in clumps. So um, my hair before, if you didn't know, my hair is very thin, to my in my opinion. It was very thin. It was it didn't go past like neck length. So my hair wasn't very healthy. And after I permed it and clumps of it was coming out, uh, clumps of it were coming out in Denmark. So I didn't have anybody to go to and be like, hey, I'm losing hair. Can somebody help me? You know, there's not a, um, a large African-American population in Denmark, if you didn't know. Um, so from that point on, I decided to stop perming my hair because I got tired of losing so much of it. Um, and there's also a point with perms where like this, your scalp will be very tender and I didn't enjoy that either. So I chose not to perm my hair anymore. Um, and eventually about, I want to say about six months after I came back from Denmark, I chose to cut it all off. Um, I got tired of combing two textures. <laughs> I think that was the, the main point. And then in order to blend the natural hair with the, the permed hair, you have to continuously straighten your hair. So it's like, I don't want to damage the new hair that I have just to keep the stuff that's going to come out anyway. Um, so I cut my hair off um, and I had a nice size fro. So I was pretty happy, but I didn't get a lot of, you know, ecstatic reports from people in my family all the time. Uh, but my best friends from college, they were very supportive because a lot of them were also natural and experienced that kind of disregard from their families. Like, oh, maybe you shouldn't have do that. You had nice hair. Like, no, we, we didn't have nice hair. Sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it was breaking off. Right. So <laughs> um, I think the support that I had from my friends, I eventually had my mom go natural, too. I cut all her hair off. Um, she permed her hair again. But, you know, she went through ex the experience with me. My sister cut all her hair off and maintains a short hairstyle. So I think although people are like, oh, you know, that's very um, that's nappy and things like that, it's actually very beautiful. Like once you get past the stages um, of it being affected by the perm, because I think you need at least six to eight months or longer for the perm to be completely out of your, so your head. Like, your hair is so beautiful. Like, all you got to do is spray some water, put some oil, and you can do whatever style you want. Like, I could not do that with a perm. My hair got wet. It was a problem. So, <laughs> um, I really enjoy having my natural hair. And even um, there's a salon that another friend just hooked me up with. They work strictly on, well, as far as I know, they condition natural hair. So, I'm going to send you that link. And so, the next time you're back in uh, Chicago, maybe you and your mom can go check them out you know and let me know what mm -hmm. what it's like you know yeah that'd be great cool okay <laughs> ladies and gentlemen i'm getting a little bit too comfortable because i miss jules so much you know i'm so excited for her i'm so proud of you jules you know and <laughs> there's many more conversations to come and also if listeners you want to send us a question that we want we can direct to juletta then email us at tocTown14 at gmail.com. We will sure to get the question to her and definitely either respond to you back immediately by email or answer it on air. But until then, we look forward to our next motivational moment and the next student that we're going to be mentoring through this transition. Take care.